I just I really was very creative. I wrote little poems. I remember in second grade, I wrote a poem called My Glue Stick Has the Flu. Um, and uh, my teacher loved it. And she had me read it to the class. And the class I, I kind of bombed with the class. You know what I mean? It was kind of some skeptical. They weren't quite on board. And my teacher said, I think Melinda's a little ahead of her time. Well, you know, theater was really a lifesaver for me um, because we did move so much and I was a very painfully shy uh, child. So it was very hard for me to express myself or even talk to people, but when I found acting, you know, every school had like a, a school play or something that you could um, get involved with. And when I found that I had this acumen for acting, I would uh, join the school play and it was such a great way to make friends. And I got to play a character that I felt very safe in. I didn't have to be myself. So it was a great way to have a community. Well, first I took a nanny job and then I went to college um, for a few years. So I did, I got a lot of experience in college doing plays, tons of plays. It was a really good experience. Um, I had a theater, an acting scholarship. So um, that was a great, experience. I also got to take a lot of great writing classes and do a lot of writing. So, but then when it would come to like having to take ethics or something, I just really couldn't hang. So I left and I went to acting school in LA. And from there, I went to the Groundlings. I went through the whole Groundlings program. And then I began doing stand up. Um, so it was a lot of experience writing characters, basically the stuff I'd always been doing, acting, writing characters, you know, that kind of led to stand up that I do, which is a lot of storytelling characters um, and jokes. Get a mentor, get someone who's done this before, who's done it well, who can encourage you, who can guide you. If you can't find a mentor, get a coach, get a great coach, get a great consultant. You know, coaches can save you a lot of time, shortcut you. So definitely benefit from um, the resources available to you as well as like looking up those people you want to emulate. There's tons of interviews with them. Many of them reveal their secrets, their secret sauce, and it's very easy to find what others have done who've gone before you. You don't have to reinvent the wheel or figure it out on your own, do anything alone. And it's very great to be able to ask for help. I used to feel sort of left out as the only girl on a lot of stand-up lineups. But then and one day I, I noticed that half of the audience was, was female. And I began to think of it as, well, they deserve to hear their stories and see their lives represented on stage. So then I began to think of it more as a service. Have I had moments that were soul crushingly sexist or misogynistic? Yes. Have I encountered, you know, sexual harassment? Yes. Have I you know, felt like sometimes it's a boys club. Yes. I think, however, you can um, look to what you want to create in the world and put your energy there. Um, then I feel that I'm in the solution. I'm being of use. I'm being of service. Um, and that makes me feel very empowered, you know, because there is a lot I can do in that area of what can I contribute instead of complaining about how it is. Um, you know, that might look different from time to time. Maybe sometimes the way to contribute or add value is to 
um, speak out about a situation that people don't know is happening, you know, to advocate uh, for voices who can't advocate for themselves or to bring light to a situation by talking about it or by um, making those points in your art, using your art or speaking out against an oppressor or, um, you know, going to the police if you need to or something like that. But other times it might be, you know, using that in your art somehow metaphorically um, to to contribute to the solution. And so that's what I'm always interested in. And that's why I've like created my own things all along. You know, I've created my own when people weren't booking me in the comedy shows, I just created my own, you know, I created my own show. It ran for 10 years. That was one of many shows that I created that was a weekly show where I got to create a community I'd love to be a part of and work on my own material and further the careers of other artists who I believe in. And, you know, look, to filling the lineups with people who I admire and I wanted to hang out with. And the same is true of my most recent special, you know, it's like I what and my series, like when I wasn't getting, you know, a lot of a lot of the roles I wanted to get, I found like I'm not going to just sit around and wait to be chosen. You know, that is a victim that's making myself a victim and how can I create when I want to see and I just created my own series and I put my own people in it that I wanted to be with and I created a role that I wanted to play and I like took you know material from my life and turned it into um, you know jokes and so that was like a very cathartic and healing process for me and my comedy special inappropriate I really wanted to um, yeah I'm saying like look there's a me too movement it's an important movement it's a huge time in history we're hearing voices that you know voices are amplified that need to be amplified you know um, repercussions are occurring that need to happen but I was you know I want to make something to contribute to that to con keep that conversation going but you know I'm not pretending to be an expert because I'm not an expert I'm just a comedian right I'm just a woman in the world so even though like a lot of people are asking me for quotes on things um, and I'm happy to help um, but sometimes I feel like I can't speak for the victims because um, I can't begin to understand what they've been through but yet i can make a special that is continuing the conversation about healing and solution so that in that way i don't have to solve it because i don't know how to solve it i wish i could but i don't know how but i can continue a conversation or hopefully keep a conversation going about how we can all you know collectively think about how to do better um, in this area. Yeah, it was totally inspired by that and, um, and what happened when I had a tweet, a, a popular tweet about the Me Too movement, um, that, uh, you know that that kind of became the nugget of the show and like thinking about I just didn't want to make a show where I'm just like blaming a whole gender you know I wanted demonizing or villainizing an entire gender I wanted to say these things are the result of familial typically familial or societal trauma and what are we doing about it, you know, as a people? Um, and then the only way that I could illustrate that was to look at what am I doing about that? And that's where I delved into how I have um, processed and healed my own familial trauma. Um, and that's where I, kind of thought oh this is using humor for healing so it's it's hilarity h-e-a-l-a-r-i-t-y
Yeah, I mean, I think a lot of artists go through that, you know, and um, I mean, I know I certainly did. My mom definitely wanted me to, you know, do some financial stuff, go into sales like she had. But, uh, you know, you got to you got to follow your heart. Thank you.